In this video, I will be talking about density calculation, so calculation of where is the concentration of something highest. So we'll be looking at where are the where's the concentration of capitals the highest, where is the concentration of population the highest. And in QGIS and other places you talk about these as heat maps um, or more general kernel densities. Um, and I will also, in as a supplement to these kernel densities with reduced raster layers, I will also look at how one can quantify these density concepts using grids or fishnet, whatever you want to call um, this calculation type. So let's uh, dive into how this is done in QGIS. So um, our usual data set, European countries, Capitals, non capitals. Um, each of these has an attribute called map population. That's um, the daytime population, I guess. I don't know. I haven't checked. Doesn't really matter for this purpose. Um, so um, let's start out by seeing you know, we are a um, capital hungering um, person that wants to live where there's lots of capitals close by so let's say that um we are the type that you know go off weekend bagging a capital so um we want capitals to be within let's see 200 kilometers so where is the concentration of capitals highest if we are looking within the range of 200 kilometers so this is one of the things about density. It's a really somewhat dangerous tool because often we do not think that it, this range element, this 200 kilometers, I would, if I look for density of capitals within a 10 kilometer grid, this will give me something. If I say 200, it will give me a completely different picture. So density is really one of those tools where if you read something about density, you'll probably be, should be, hmm, read it again, check what's going on. And if you're going to use it yourself, tell your user what you've done, um, because all of these parameters will have a really severe influence on the result. So uh, basically, our tool that we'll be looking at is this heat map. Um, so in our first situation, we want to just to look at uh, capitals. So we'll run our heat map. We'll say, okay, I want to look at my single, uh, and I want them in the right one. So this one is the one I want, uh, so the one that is projected. Then I ask me what um, what is the radius I'm interested in. So in this case, I'm interested in uh, in being able to go for a vegan trip, so I'm looking at 200 kilometers. It's going to be a raster output, so it will specify how big this output cells are. In this case, uh, a thousand by a thousand meters is probably appropriate. Uh, it can do a range of influence if that was it. It can do a weight. I'm looking at population, we'll do that in a moment. Um, then it has these kernel shapes. Okay, there are different kernel shapes. Um, to be honest, um, look them up in uh, Wikipedia. I only use the quadratic, which is a a cubic function. So what it and what this does is that it um, decreases the influence as the cubic function of the distance. We'll, I'll show you the diagram in a moment. Or the uniform version. Uh, uniform just means is it or is it not within the search radius. I'll use this uniform for this case. Uh, the K is only for the triangle and I'm ready to run. So this is my map and uh, what we have is that we have a heat map. So somewhere there is, is 
six capitals within 200 kilometers. So uh, let's change the symbology to a single band. This is it's fine. I just invert the colors. So, um, and yes, we can see that that is somewhere down here where you can find not less than six capitals within a um, a 200 kilometer um, distance. Um, all of the other places we have, of course, have zero. Um, so that's the basic um, way of using it. So one of the characteristics of this uniform distribution is that you can see that many of the places, for instance, here, we have the highest density at the first distance from these capitals here. So it says they're here in the middle of nowhere. This is where we have the highest density. Well, it is true that if I was going to find a place to live or go on holiday and I wanted to play, find where there was five um, capitals went to uh, 100 kilometers, I should find somewhere in this area here. That's correct. But it doesn't really say, ooh, this is where the concentration of capitals is the highest, or concentration of population or whatever. Um, it says it's more a question about how many capitals is there access to from this point. So if we really want this more density consideration, um, let's look at what I meant by these with these kernel functions. So a quadratic is basically think of it as a soft someone dropping um, soft ice lumps. So what we'll do is that we'll drop a lump here at one look. So this is a capital, and then its influence will decay as a function of its the distance to the location. And we can then add all of these up. These are made so that the sum in here, the, the area, or the size of this area, is equal to whatever the counting is. So one if it's one, the population if it is the population. So there's some tricks in this um, to be aware of. But it's a, it's a really um, useful way of approaching the density concept. So if we go back to our layer here. So OK, this was fine. Um, but let, then let's look at population. Um, so if um, we want to find where do we have the highest capital person density. So um, in that case, I will go back to my heat map. I run it again on my capitals in the right projection. Uh, yeah. And I will again use my radius of uh, 200 kilometers. And can use grid cells that are one kilometer by one kilometer. I will add a weight cell. So it has this uh, max population uh, there. And I will use the quadratic. So it will be these blobs of soft, uh, of soft ice on top of each other. So they'll add up. Um, and they will be decaying onto this 200 kil kilometer radius. So let's run this instead. Okay. So we have a map like this. Um, let's get rid of those non capitals. Um, so this is our population density again. This time it's not in number of capitals, but number of capital living population. Now we can change it to a solo color. And I can just flip this one. And yeah, let's keep this range like this. So here we can see that, of course, big towns like Paris, London, Madrid. But again here, in this area here, we find that so we have that the population is highest here. 
if you compare this with our map from before, it said that strictly speaking, we have access to five capitals within 200 kilometers here. But if you look at the population, you see that this is highest up here. Um, so there is a clear difference in what we're talking, not only just because we are comparing population to account, but it's also the way that it finds where the concentration is the highest. So instead of just using this uniform, where it's just is the capital in or not in the 200 kilometers, without looking at how far away it is to this kernel density or what we the cubic, where it's let's think of it as these soft, uh, software um um what is the um fl flashy eyes things um so um our soft eyes i was thinking good um so um this is um those standard tools and they are they really useful um they are good at giving you a type of density you can use them both way around you can say so how many capitals are there within search pages or you can look where is the density of population the highest it's the same two it's you know two different wordings um, the other approach that is also very common is to apply a grid or fishnet over the mapping area and then do a summing up in each of these cells so there is a tools for creating it in, in QGIS, they're called grids. So I'll create a grid first. So I want this to be a hexagon, just for the fun of it. Uh, grid extent is going to be the same as a layer. So it's going to be the same as my countries. My um, my spacing, so I put our space symbol of let's say uh, in kilometers again and uh, set that to be 100 kilometers in each of these so they will be spaced within 100 kilometers in each dimension there's going to be no overlap and i'm going to use this um, lambert conic projection and i'll run my grid generator here so this generates this nice little grid that covers my entire area and um i just leave them like i'll do some same thing what we're going to do in the moment is that we're going to take all our non-capitals so we have this single part non-capitals better use them so all of these and then we're going to count how many are there in each of them and what is the total population range of each of them so this is basically a join so we're going to join our non-capitals to our grids but we're going not to use it some attribute to do it on but location so there is um if we go join so we have these join attribute by location and join attribute by location summary so this one will just i could use this one to right into the each urban area which grid are you part of i'll use this one if i want to to aggregate the points to my grids and that's what i want to do in this case so i'll use the summary function my input is going to be my single part non-capitals uh yeah i guess it's okay uh my grid going to be my target i think it's okay that they're not the same projection i'm going to say they have to intersect so it's going to be inside it what do i want to do well basically i just want to take oops did i do this wrong uh did this wrong way around grid and single part non-capital there uh, so which field i want to measure this is much better uh i want to measure my population max 
So what I did wrong is I mixed these up. So this is the one I want to join into that one. And what do I want to do with it? Well, I would like to count how many there are, and I want to calculate the sum. So I want to know how many non-capital cities, populated places are there within each of the grids, and I want to know what is the sum of the population in them. So I think I'm ready to run. So, um, I now have a new grid, a uh, giant grid down there. Bring it up, get rid of my raw grid. So, this one has data in it. I'll start out by filtering out all of those that have no data in it because it always uh, models up the simplification of it. So, I'll just start out by saying that if my count is, um, has to be larger, Strictly larger than zero. So that will filter out all of those where there are no um, non capitals within the areas. Once that is done, I can go in and do a symbology on it. So I'll change it to a radiated based on the sum of population. And equal intervals, uh, equal count. So that's fine. Probably want 10. And I want uh, this one no, round. So um, I've got a lot of, lot of things going on here. So let's get rid of those. So we have um, in each of our small grid cells. So if I use my I2 in this grid cell here, it should say that there are three, one, two, three non capitals inside it. And you can see here where there is nothing, there's no capitals there. Um, and at the same time, I have colored the in this so this is the sum of population in the grid cell so it does give us and what we could is we could compare it's not quite fair because one is capitals are as non capital so in find different things here but this is in many ways the same approach that this one does um so we are looking at counting but instead of Counting and then letting it is a bit be simply counting how many, summing up how many people live within these non capitals in each of these grid cells. So, um, density is in, um, in general a, um, a dangerous tool because it has this concept of distance in its calculation, and you should always really be careful of what you are. Wanting because it's two really different things. If you uh, want to look at your uniform, so that's if you want to count how many there are in your search radius, or you want to use one of these quadrics, so that is this soft ice lots that melt out on top of each other. So these two different approaches that you can use to do the, the density. So, the kernel shape and the radius has immense influence on what you do. In that way, it is somehow easier to accept this fishnet because here we can see the size of the unit that we are counting inside. So, although it's a bit more coarse, it in some ways is a bit more honest, easier for the reader to understand what's going on. So be careful of reusing the density tools. They can be tricky. And I hope that I have explained the problems here so that um, you um, can communicate safely about densities. Hope you like the video, and I hope to see you in another one. Bye.